Hello everybody, I'm Evil Rabbit. We're here on Torque Drift on the PC, and today we do have the Mazda R9 and the CS racing wheel that we're going to be taking a look at today here in Torque Drift to see how the R9 reacts to Torque Drift. So make sure you guys follow me on all social media. I'll let you find the description box below because if you guys remember last time, we started with the R5. So now we're start now we're taking a look at the R9. So let's do it. So I figured the best way to do this would be to just go into the yard, the full track, and just go full send with this and see what we can actually do. So we have our 890 Supra. Let's just do it. We're on the same settings we were on with our R5. And that actually was quite of a, quite an unexpected jump. Lots in the forest. Uh, I think we're actually uh, getting it quite well right now with this wheel. Oh, as I say that, we go off course. <laughs> Should never say something because then that usually happens. Definitely a lot more feedback feel with the R9, obviously being, you know, the nine newton meters versus the 5.5 of the R5. But overall, with the larger dam of the wheel too, a little bit different, but it actually does not feel that bad and we're actually able to throw some decent lines. We're taking that start stop light with us. Let's kick it that way. Get yourselves in the fourth. Not the cleanest line, but I'm gonna try linking the whole track. I know we're gonna probably mess up at some point because, well, I said we're gonna try and do something. And technically we did not link that. Definitely gotta clutch kick that out. <laughs> Still haven't decided to dial what's up with my brakes yet, but the base itself is working quite well. And I mean, we're managing to get some decent runs. Ah, uh, we should have been third. We're managing to get some decent runs with this R9 and the CS. I'm noticing that the car does not like the transition fully on throttle. So we kind of have to be off throttle to transition smoothly. And I think that's just a testament to my setup. Because I had, do not have this car fully set up yet. We just got some parts installed on the car, a little wall tap. So we are just trying to shake down the car. And of course, now we're on the R9. So it's totally different and it definitely has a lot more feel to it. But overall, not too shabby. I don't know. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of feedback. So overall, definitely thoroughly impressed. We need to go through and uh, dial in some settings. I'm gonna be doing a settings video for you guys so you guys can see exactly what I'm using in the pit house app versus what I'm using in game and everything like that. Uh, but the R9 definitely does work here in Torque Drift on PC and I'm uh, quite impressed with it. That turbo lag is what's uh, getting me, but of course that gets me in any, any drifting game. I got it used to keeping the cars up in power compared to V8s. We're just kind of freestyling it right now. So I feel like we should be able to, we should go be able to hop into a freestyle competition. We might be able to win. So let's go hop into a freestyle and see if we can't actually win or see if there's an event we can try and com uh, complete for today's episode. Of we do have an event. We have a Orlando event. 
Now this is an extremely hard track, but <laughs> we're gonna try it. Looks like we're chasing down NMLZ S15. So we're gonna choose it. We're gonna take the A90 out and see what we can see if we can get our chase score against Adam LZ's S15. Shouldn't have hesitated off the start. Oh, yep. That car did not like that. Managed to catch back up to him, but the start did kill us. Oh, we can get this. We could definitely get this challenge. If the wheel does this. We're weird. That's one thing about the wheel. This is a weird freak out initially uh, when you finish the run. It starts to like oscillate back and forth. So you either got to hold on to it or just let it go. We're gonna definitely retry that because if we can figure out the start. We should be able to be a, notice a tail with him. Roll in the throttle a little bit. Too far away, we are out of his uh, tandem circle. I don't know if this car has enough power. We may have to uh, bring out the S15. No, see, you can see that. So I just kind of hold on to the wheel in one place. Um, we may have to bring out the S15 center of the wheel because I don't know where it is it would be terrible to uh, be starting it totally pointed the wrong direction so we're gonna grab our s15 and try and complete this with the s15 if not we're gonna bring out an FD car My Supra handled a lot better than this S15 is right now. We may have to bring on an FD car in order to complete this challenge because I don't think my cars are going to catch up at all. We're going to probably change cars because we got to get 24k. So we're going to definitely probably bring out the car that I'm most comfortable in chasing with. Which is the E92 Eurofighter from Stuff Blues, but although we did good with Red Dan Supra last episode, so let's bring out the Supra again. We always lose him in that first turn, and I'm not sure. I think I'm just trying to initiate weirdly inside him. Probably two inside, so we're gonna try that again. I think we're just trying to initiate too far in, just causing us the issues. But Road Atlanta is definitely a hard track on any any game you play on. Oh, we botched it up the hill. We were right there too. That was where we needed to be. I think we can get it with Randan Super because we were we we had it. We were just a little bit off. If we wouldn't have botched it up the hill, I need to downshift in the third and uh, send it all the way up the hill. We had the initiation down that time though. If you guys like this, you guys want to keep seeing the Wheel Chronicles here on Torture, let me know down in the comments. See, I don't know why the car washes out like that. I think it has something to do with pulling handbrake going up that hill. Maybe we just need to send it with clutch. We may just have to send it with clutch and or just left foot brake it up there instead of pulling the handbrake. When we pull the handbrake, it seems to wash ourselves out. We did get the first one. So there's that. But we're definitely gonna try and get the full one here.
Well, that's a quirk. Smack into him. We always tend to somehow lose front grip going up the hill. So that's a little unfortunate. So let's try and change cars and see if we can't maybe get it to work a different car we're losing front grip up front i need to get some other pro cars in here uh like the new z's maybe some uh of the rtrs and stuff like that so let's, let's see who are we gonna and well, let's go with christoph Lucius car but that was a car that i used to always get really good club standards with so let's see if that still holds true with a wheel It's so weird that the car does that going uphill. Then again, I was also way inside of him. So this is not an easy challenge. This is definitely making the game much more challenging for me using a wheel, but it is a lot of fun. So if you guys, like I said, if you guys are back watching this as a second episode, make sure you guys follow me on social media and tap that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel. I appreciate the support. I don't understand why we wash out. Ugh. It could just be me trying to overcompensate my steering. So we're going to try one more car. We're going to try Red Hands. Because... Not Red Hands. Bad Mice. Because his car tends to be very tail happy. So maybe it'll help us going up the hill. Okay, so that does definitely go better uphill. Yeah, his car transitions way faster. So we're going to try the RX-7 for a little bit of a longer wheelbase to end this episode off. So if you guys are playing Torch Rift, let me know down below what's your favorite car of the FD cars. Not your personal car, it's your favorite FD car. So we're going to try the RX-7. See what we can do with this one. You definitely have to flutter the throttle leaving the gate. That car did it too. I wonder if it has to do something with the fact that I'm. Oh, uh, you know what? I think torque drift is slightly weird that. I get off the gas when I handbrake because it's naturally a natural thing because you have to. But I am noticing that maybe we need to stay on throttle or turn on the on throttle option the handbrake pull because it seems to not work out that way. We're gonna try it one time here. Okay. <clears throat> Well, we gotta actually run that correctly. It was just going up the hill that I think we need to stay on the throttle. See, the car doesn't do anything weird. Okay. Oh, no! We lost it! We had that! We were in the, we were kind of in the pocket. So we're gonna do that one more time. So I think I need to adjust that option that has throttle on when handbrake, because I think that is just a characteristic of the game that I need to figure out. One final try. As I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode here on Torque Drift, on the PC, on the wheel, Mazda R9 wheel. Definitely a, a fun, fun challenge. Oh, that's way, way over the grass. Oh, yeah, we're just going to kill it. We kill him. Oh, we can't kill him. <laughs> Big hell do here for this episode. Make sure you should follow me on all social media. As always, I thank you guys for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit, 
and I wrecked Red Dan's car, so I'll see you guys on the track.